Well, look, as far as, uh, as far as India is concerned, I think the first and most important signal we need to send to the people of Bangladesh is that we stand with them, that there is no other vested interest that India has. We have interests, obviously, in a peaceful, prosperous Bangladesh, but we are with the people. We stand for uh, their right to determine their own political destiny and their own representatives. Mm -hmm. Having said that, we obviously have to be very much on alert. There are some disturbing reports coming, as you know, of uh, attacks on, on Hindu uh, uh, homes, temples, and individuals. Uh, one might hope this will calm down, especially because every sort of popular uprising is followed by some degree of anarchy. We all saw the pictures of looting, etc. yesterday. It may calm down and stabilize in a couple of days, in which case we don't have to worry. If it doesn't, then, of course, there is a risk even of refugees fleeing to our country, and that would be a matter of grave concern. Third, obviously, I'm sure that our High Commissioner and our staff there are safe and they're monitoring the situation closely, and I hope they're in touch with the new authorities as they emerge. We still don't know who is going to be in the interim government. Various names are being floated, but I think that's going to be an important contact. There are some understandable concerns in India about the increasing influence of the jamaat e islami which has taken a very hostile attitude to India in the past, mm. and possible meddling by China and Pakistan, which have always seen Bangladesh as a potential um, soft underbelly of India that they could, they could uh, uh, fish in troubled waters in. And so, therefore, again, we have to be alert. We have to do our own thing. But I believe it would be a mistake uh, to take a hostile attitude to this change, even though we were strong supporters of the previous government, because it is not our business. Uh, and I don't think the Indian government will do that. And the Indian government will accept whatever new reality emerges, that's my impression, and that they would actually work uh, seriously with the, uh, the new authorities, because peace and progress in Bangladesh is not only in the interests of the Bangladeshi people, it's also in our interests. We don't want an unstable or an unfriendly neighbor. I think constructively, I think we should make ourselves available, our good officers, to help them in whatever way. Uh, India must reassure everybody that we are not a, an unfriendly power, that we have no desire to dominate or control what's happening in Bangladesh. We would like to be helpful. That would be the kind of message that I believe we should convey both publicly and privately. No, I think it's very clearly the end of the uh, Sheikh Hasina era, no doubt about that. She's also 76 years old, and I don't think she's going to sit in exile plotting a comeback. I think that would be unwise. Um, and we've seen uh, an unfolding drama in the last half a century between the forces associated with the liberation movement, Sheikh Majib Rahman and now his daughter, for a lengthy period of time. And on the other side of the fence, uh, people associated more with the military and to some degree with the more Islamist forces within Bangladesh. Don't forget, Bangladesh used to be East Pakistan. Mm -hmm. There is a certain, um, shall we say, basis for um, uh, Islamic fervor in sections of that society. Uh, India has, I believe, engaged fairly constructively with every government, even the governments that were not overtly friendly to us. Mm. And I think we'll have to continue doing exactly the same thing. Uh, as far as the uh, Sheikh Hasina era is over, I do believe it presided over very important economic growth and progress. But it's not clear that the benefits of that economic growth reach the bottom of the pyramid. And that's why the people who are on the streets protesting don't feel they have much to lose. I'm told that 40% of the population of Bangladesh between 15 and 24 mm. are neither in education nor employed. And that's a damning statistic. So for these people, um, they welcome a change because they were not doing very well under the previous system, even though the macroeconomic indicators were very good. This is an important lesson for all countries, including us in India. We have to make sure that whatever growth figures the government talks about, that the benefits are reaching the ordinary people of this country. And that's the same logic that perhaps in Bangladesh has failed.